When you come to Summer Dance and dance, you're a rookie, but you can become a superhero. It takes a lot of hard work to become a superhero, but <laughs> we have an interview with one of those superheroes. Uh, she's from the original Lockers, Tony Basil. Check out the interview. We'll be right back. It was in 1969 or 70, and uh, my friend Lamont Peterson, uh, who became a very well-known Soul Train dancer, uh, told me about a dance that, that this guy, Don Camelot Campbell, was creating called the Camelot. And we went looking for him uh, in the clubs. You've got to remember, in that time period, there were no cell phones, no YouTube. There was just word of mouth. When Don was creating the dance, which was a year before Soul Train uh, went on the air, it's uh, Don Campbell on Campbell on the bottom sitting. Um, Luffy looked to his left, and down up the stairs is Shabadoo, Fred Berry, myself, Greg Campbellock Jr., and Slim the Robot. Out of that group, um, uh, three of us had careers that that launched out in other directions. Shabadoo did films. Fred Berry became a very big star on American television. And I, I had a song called Hey Mickey, but I also choreographed for other, uh, other artists. And um, boy, Don gave birth to a lot. And uh, one day, Don Camelot Campbell blew through the side door of Osco's, which was on um, La Cienica Boulevard, and Juan said, that's Don Campbell, but he didn't need to tell me because I saw someone in striped socks and knickers and a, a, a hat um, that was doing a, a, a dance that was unique to American culture and something I had never seen before since James Brown. You have to realize that in 19... 59, people were still partner dancing, jitterbug. They had just let go. They just had use of their hands for 10 years. People were doing the pony and the twist and the jerk and the skate. And all of a sudden, Don Campbell, he, he brought in communication where he could talk to the audience with his hands. And that gave the dancer the legacy of not having to dance behind a singer to tell a story. There were no battles. There was just club. There was just uh, dancing for the sake of dancing. There was no, no image of a career in street at all until Soul Train happened, which was in 1971. When we did contests, we would do them for an audience. We would go to a club, a little bar, and for 50 bucks, if we won, we would solo facing the audience. And then the audience would applaud. And whoever got the most applause was the winner. So there was a factor in of performing and drawing in an audience that developed in our dance. My favorite battle at Summer Dance Forever was 2018 uh, with Flo Master, who actually studied with an original locker, Greg Campbellock Jr., and Lil Jang. And he really uh, he not it, it wasn't about it wasn't like just about and technique. It was in relation to the audience. Flo entertained the audience as he was having a deep, deep conversation with little Jay. And the conversation changed through, throughout the rounds. And uh, it, was, it was, for me, the closest I'd ever seen with a battle encompassing everything that locking was about. It was about performance. It really wasn't a social dance. There was a desire to take over the club, to take over a staircase that might lead up to the, sta to the stage, or, you know, lock and sit down in a chair and jump up and move to somebody else. And the guys would have these, literally, dance conversations with people that were sitting 
and watching. And all those looks and points had, a, had, had a, an emotional meaning behind them. So, so the dance was, as it was developing and being created in, in the early days with the technique, and the level of dancer that it attracted, um, it, it, it also had an organic feel. I love seeing the original organic style, but I think without the funk, uh, without the culture of the funk, you don't have the dance yet. I also love to see it being progressive and creative because when the dance was being created in the club. Every week, somebody would come in with something new and fresh. Oh my God, when somebody, when Greg Campbellock Jr. walked in with the Witchaways, uh, that wasn't using the locking arms. That was a step that just worked so well with the, with the spirit of locking. So I think when I'm judging, uh, I look for all these new, fresh, progressive ideas that work within the style of the dance. I think it's so important. And Don used to love to see that also. He just, we just love to sit there and be surprised. Surprise me. Get, show me something that I didn't think of. With the formation of the lockers uh, and being on television, we, we, we gave other street dancers coming along um, a, 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 a vision that they could earn a living at their art form, which was something that hadn't happened before. You know, I don't do knee drops, I don't spin down to my knee, I don't fly up in the air, but what happens is, if you continue to dance, there is just no doubt that your power moves go away. And once your power moves go away, you have to really confront dancing. You have to dance. You just, you have to find another way to have a power move. Uh, this year, Don Pat passed away, March 30th, 2020. Um, and it's, it's, it's really wonderful for me to be talking about him and the lockers. And I don't think we ever dreamed that there would be international events uh, celebrating, you know, our dance.